Hi everybody, Mark the Flicking Feathers again today. Tang Grass, it's Flats Minnow. It's a deadly bed and back part, it's really good. Um, I believe it was designed for snook and red fishing uh, originally. But it works, I mean, just anything that eats a bait fish, anything that eats a wee minnowy thing like this. And obviously, been the bend back, it's very weedless, uh, so you can throw any cover. As always, we'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page. From there, wants to support the channel, get access to the members on the content, the online fly tying classes, as well as enter into the giveaways. Alternatively, you can watch the video the way through, share it, like the video, comment below, that all helps. Now, I've got my hook in my vise. Um, this is a mustad, it's an old mustad that I've had in a hook boxes, but I'm, uh, I've bent it back, it's a 34007, I think. Uh, now, I've put the bend back in, and before I tie the fly, I think it's worth looking at the bend back. You don't want to over bend, right? A lot of, I see videos and I've seen people with bend backs and they're over bent. Um, and those, if you bend it too much, you're never going to hook anything, or you're very rarely going to hook anything. Um, and you don't really get any advantages as extra weedlessness. Now, I'm going to use this wee bit of foam just to kind of illustrate. You should have a, be able to put a line from the hook eye into the back of the bend there, like a straight line like that. See how that sits within? That's only a couple of mil of foam. But I've got that straight line coming to the back of the bend. Doesn't need to be exactly the same spot as that, it can be slightly further, you can bend it slightly less or very, very slightly more. But you're looking for that ideal shape where there's a line through the bend of the hook so that it, when the fish bites it, you can still set the hook and you're pulling the hook point in. To over bending them is just a disaster. Oops. So, I'm going to start my thread. This is just Danville's uh, Flymaster and Chartreuse. I'm just going to get this started. I'm just going to these old hooks. I'm just going to kind of close the the eye. You don't. I mean, you don't always need to do that. Wait, run a base of thread. Didn't didn't the shank just about the start of the bend? I didn't break cleanly. So turn away. Then come back. Turn it over. And I'll add, I'm using a set of large gold bead chain here. Now you can tie this in different colours as well. Black and purple is good. Uh, and I put, a, I put a silver or a red eye on the black and purple, but up to yourself. So I'm just getting that locked in. check it, make sure it's nice and straight, how you like it, and then I like to run down the, run down the shank again, and I'll come back up, and that gives you like, a lot of torque on the shank, uh, with your thread, a lot of grip, so that th this n next set of anchoring X's really seems to hold it better. Now I'm going to get some ice chenille, you can use Estaz, Crystal Flash chenille, something like that. Just, and this is a regular, and it's olive. Build the step, build the core, tie back, and I'll bring my thread up, and I'll park it in front of the eyes. Before I wind this, I like to just come in with some head cement. Put a generous amount all along the thread base there. It just makes the fly more durable. So I'm going to wind this by hand and sweep the fibres back. Right, this gives you a better effect than using the rotary. It also, again, makes a tougher fly. Um, 
because everything's sort of swept back and protecting the layer below. Just like scales, effectively. Just come up. When I get to the eyes, I come up and over the top. You can go through the bottom if you like, I just prefer to go over the top. A couple of wraps will hold it. Trim away my waist. And then a long fibres, because you need to watch you don't stab your fingers being too aggressive trying to uh, get the bits of pearl flake away. So, we've got our body, now we're coming for the first tie of bucktail, so I'm getting some white. That this one. Got to get stuff. I want to have at least twice the hook length here so that I can have a decent size wing. And you don't need an awful lot. Right? Don't be too, don't be too heavy. Take away the rubbish at the bottom. Roll it together. Any really long fibres, you, I like to take them out, and sort of restack them, or realign them slightly. I don't like. You should never stack bucktail because you end up with like, a paintbrush effect that is no use to anybody. But you can sort of realign the hairs slightly to get the taper that you want. I want the wing to be two hook lengths. Right. I'll just check that again. One, two, three, fine. And I'll trim it before I tie it in. And check the length, that looks good. And I like to just get a wee press with my thumb just to sort of flatten it slightly, spread it out like, across the across the bar of the beaching eyes. Some gold, got some kind of gold uh, crystal flash. Well, this is the Fly Tires Dungeon stuff, but it's all the same. Couple of strands. It's quite long, this, so I can fold it in half. Just catch that in. Fold it back over, and you can sort of adjust the length. Some folk like it away beyond the back, I sort of only want it slightly longer than the bucktail. That's fine. We've got some olive. Similar size bunch. Take away any of the short rubbish. I like to roll it together, see how it sits. You can even moisten your fingers to get you an idea what the clump will be like. I'm happy enough with that. Check the length. Pre-cut, offer it in. Okay, come to the front and I'm going to work my way back, keeping that olive on top, so, so that the they're all tied back to the same point. And then the last thing is I'm going to get four. Peacock heralds, I'm taking it off an eye. 
but you can use the packet stuff if you like. Now, sometimes the peacock, this looks like it's got to sit quite nicely for me, but sometimes it can be unruly. Um, in fact, I'll just turn one other, the other way right to show you. See, I'm going to tie this in. Right, I've, because I twisted them out of shape there, they're all over the place. But it doesn't matter, just get them in. You can use the back edge of your scissors slightly, right? Although, just to put the curve in. Although I'm no super in love with that method, but you can do it. But once you've fished it, or even if you run it under a tap and let it dry, it'll all come together, it'll take the shape nice, just like you would with a beast or a, a hollow fly or something. You can rely on the water to shape the fly. So then it's just a case of shaping this head, tidying everything up. Make sure it's nice and clean. I don't want the peacock showing through. Nice long up finish. Smoothing it that nose shape. Nice and tight. Trim away the waist. And then more head cement. And I'm using a lot of varnish cement. I'm not using super glue, I'm not using UV. It soaks in nice, you know it's cured. It's salt water proof. And then you give it another coat and it'll be a nice glossy shiny head. So there you go, that's um, Grasset's Flats Mineral. Killer. Thanks, sir. Cheers, guys. Bye.